This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is episode 490. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. It is of course Friday the 13th, which is a special day for a horror fan, specifically if your homeboy Jason Voorhees is your favourite horror icon, as he is mine and I'm sure many of you out there checking out this video or the audio or wherever you check out podcasts Under the Stairs. Now, Traditionally, over the last couple of Friday the 13th, myself and my nine-year-old daughter, Winter, have been going through each movie one at a time. It's going to take ages at this rate, but we have decided, because we won't be in the country when this episode drops, to advance record a little episode covering the next movie that we would have watched, which would be Friday the 13th, Part 3, a.k.a. 3D. So, what is coming up on this episode for you is a very special review with myself and my daughter covering this movie. Whilst this is actually playing and we're on the other side of the world, we will be checking out part four. That's right, we're doubling them up now, otherwise she'll be 21 by the time we get to the end of the franchise. So yeah, sit back, enjoy this video as I quiz a nine-year-old as to why she may like or dislike Friday the 13th, part 3. Here's the trailer, and we'll be right back right after this. On Friday, August 13th, an all-new three-dimensional process will put you in the picture. Whether you want to be there or not. Ah! Friday the 13th, part 3, in Super 3D. Join Jason in the woods on his day, if you dare. Friday the 13th, Part 3, in Super 3D. Rated R. Friday the 13th, Part 3, opens Friday the 13th at selected theatres and drive-ins. And welcome back to another instalment of Winter Reviews, a found footage film. But this is a little bonus episode here, because it's Friday the 13th. And as a tradition, which we started two years ago, um, we have been slowly walking Winter through the Friday the 13th movies. Now... At this rate, only on Friday the 13th, I think we've worked out nine years from now before you will have actually finished the series. So we're going to change tact, I think, and double them up um, over the next coming Friday the 13th. In fact, at the moment that this episode is dropping, you and I aren't even actually in this house. We're in Japan um, and we're going to be watching Friday the 13th Part 4 in Japan. Dad's yeah. taking it with him. Um, so yeah, so what I thought we would do is we would do a review of Friday the 13th Part 3, 3D, which was a first time watch for you, uh, many, many, many time watch for me, I've seen it loads, um, but yeah, we thought we'd do this as a little bonus episode, and because it's October, this is the Halloween season after all, it'd be fun. So are you, Winter McLeish, ready to talk about Friday the 13th Part 3? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Now, we've got... A trusty iPad with me here, so I can get all the show notes and all the rest. But otherwise, I will forget. My brain is old, um, and and prone to forgetting things. Uh, but yeah, Friday Thirteenth Part Three came out in nineteen eighty two. Your dad was one years old. <laughs> That's pretty old, you know. Yeah, so I didn't go and see it at the cinema because I wouldn't be allowed in. Um, and it was directed by Steve Miner. Now, Steve Miner did at least one more Friday the 13th movie. He's directed at least one Halloween movie and loads of other things. So, busy guy. And you've uh, you've still get all the way through all the Halloween movies, but you've seen a couple. Um, well, I thought you said that I finished it. No, you watched the, the new ones and you watched the original one. So you've not seen... Um, you've not seen the actual... All the movies. 
To be honest, Dad doesn't like most of them, so that's probably why we've not watched them. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's get some information about this one. So it's based on the screenplay by Martin Kitrosser, Carol Watson, and based on the characters created by Victor Miller. Uh, the movie itself stars Dana Kimmel, Tracy Savage, Richard Brooker, who plays Jason in this movie, uh, Terry Ballard, Gloria Charles, Anne Gabus, uh, Rachel Howard, David Cat. Ims? Cams? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, Paul Kratak, um, Cherry Mullins, Terence McCory, Charlie Messenger, Kevin O'Brien, and by this point we're really getting into the, the weeds here. Catherine Perch, Jeffrey Rogers, Nick Savage, Steve Suskin. I think we'll stop there. Synopsis for this one, though. The, 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 the story is listed on IMDb, Winter. is Jason Voorhees stalks a group of friends have just arrived to spend a weekend at a cabin near Crystal Lake. This movie is set the day after the events of Friday the 13th Part 2, where you're first introduced to Jason as a character. But Jason is not the Jason that everyone knows and loves. What, what was different about Jason in Part 2? That he had, like, the bag over his head. So that good. he has the hockey mask now. He got the hockey mask in this movie, which you were very excited about. Because all the pictures of Jason you've seen, he has a hockey mask. So, this was the movie that you were going to get the hockey mask. You also got a little Mr. Potato Head. So, yeah, I've got... Uh, you want a whole Mr. Potato Head? Yes! A whole Mr. <laughs> Potato Head for this review. There you go. Potato Head, Jason. So, yeah... Uh, and look, what does he have at the top? See, we're going to tell you. Yeah. We were also talking about how Jason is now called Judo Jason because he likes throwing people out of windows. We're going we're gonna to get, get to that. So this movie was originally released in 3D, um, which some movies in the 80s were using the old uh, red and blue uh, shades. And Dad's got a pair upstairs. And we could have probably actually tested it to see if it worked on the telly, but... Um, I don't think it would work. It should. The, the 3D print that's on the Screen Factory box set should work. But, yeah, so Friday the 13th Part 3 starts right after Friday the 13th Part 2. Jason has just murdered a bunch of teenagers who went back to try and start their own kind of version of Camp Crystal Lake. Um, we have one survivor from that movie who, well, technically two, but um, she dresses up like Jason's mum at the end, like Pamela Voorhees, and tricks him. And then he she she the escapes, yeah, but she escapes though at the end. So she's safe. And at the beginning of this movie, we find that that was the events of the night before. The police have found at least eight dead bodies. And what they're going to do is they are still hunting the killer. And that's kind of the backdrop to the movie. But this movie doesn't move that far away from the plot of a Friday the 13th movie. So it is... Teenagers go to Crystal Lake, they go to a cabin or a camp or something, and very, very quickly, Jason shows up and Jason gets all stabby. Yeah. Yeah, which is your favourite bit. I and don't... also, don't you have like that little mask? That like mask? What? You know the little Jason mask? It looks like this, but like it yes. has like blood all over it. Yeah, yeah, Dad's got one as well. Leave that on, please. <laughs> right, now... Let's talk a little bit about what you liked about this movie. So, one thing you mentioned straight away is you pointed out to me that Jason likes to throw people through windows because he's done that in every movie. And then you said that you thought that Jason maybe studied... Judo. Judo, which led us to have a new nickname for him. Judo Jason. Judo Jason, who grabs people and throws <laughs> them through windows. Um, but that wasn't the only... The only thing we noticed... Taekwondo... Uh, taekwondo... He, taekwondo... Jason... Judo Jason. Yeah. So he's, he, he seems to be able, really, really, really good at disarming people and throwing them through windows. But he takes a lot of damage in this movie. He does. He gets stabbed in the hand. Yes. He gets stabbed in the leg. Yes. He gets smacked over the head with a wooden block. Uh, he gets smacked over the head with a shovel. And then he gets... Chopped in the head. Well, he also gets strangled. He gets a bit of rope put around uh, his neck and he's thrown at a window. 
and then eventually he gets an axe to the head which creates that little mark at the top which I told you the really cool thing about the, the Friday 13th movies is that they'll carry things over in other movies so if his mask gets damaged in the next movie he's got a damaged mask which I, I really like um, the thing about this movie though is it doesn't necessarily have any really likeable characters um, uh, yeah. which is maybe it's got the weirdest group um, of all characters now who did I tell you I didn't like you didn't like uh, Shelly yeah. why did I not like Shelly because he was faking to be Jason and he was just being a jerk he was being a jerk all the way through the movie now some people have said the reason he's being a jerk is that he feels that he's ugly and he, he won't be able to get a girlfriend so he plays practical jokes as a way to get people to like him right but does anyone like the practical jokes? Uh, no. No. Do they ever like the practical jokes? No. Yet he keeps doing them. Yeah. Which is why I think he's annoying. Which I think he should also stop. He should stop. Yeah. You, If you played a joke on a friend and it upset your friend, would you then do the same joke again? No. No. Why? Because... Uh, like, it'll still make them scared. Because it makes them scared. Or it makes them upset and you don't want to do that. So, this one also has another thing that you haven't seen before. You mentioned at the end of the clip of the second movie, they take the sack off Jason's face and they both go, ooh. And you said to me, I want to see Jason's face. We and did I, see him and he's ugly. You saw him a lot in this movie. So, you saw him in the distance and by the end of the movie, you see him a lot. Yeah, now, he's um, not the best looking. And not the best looking, which is probably why he wore a sack over his head, but ultimately why he ends up wearing the absolutely amazing hockey mask. And I don't know when they made this movie if they knew that when they put the hockey mask on Jason, that was going to be what people wanted and remembered by, but it is genius. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is kind of one of those things that now when you think of Jason, what do you think of? The hockey mask. The hockey mask. Dad's got a tattoo of Jason on his arm. And <laughs> yeah. And what does it have? The hockey mask. But what does it not have? <gasps> Fake. Doesn't have that. You want to know why? Because the guy drew it from memory and he didn't get it from the internet. Face and mask. So there you go. But let's talk about other things in the movie. One thing you pointed out was the soundtrack. You were like, who, who wrote the music for this, Dad? Uh-huh. And I was like, it's Harry Manfredini. And you said... I like the music. You like the music. What was it about the music that you actually liked? I think it was better than other horror movies, and it was just, like, more thrilling. It was more thrilling. So this one, they built up a lot more of the... There's a lot more... All the way through this movie. Even at bits where Jason doesn't show up. And in other movies, it was kind of linked... To Jason showing up, but in this one there's a lot of kind of false starts on that. But the music isn't played for jump scares, it's actually played for tension, which is right. So you are watching a scene, you're wondering why the like you said to me more than one time, this kind of feels a little bit scary, we're gonna get a jump scare, Dad. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 just keep watching it. You were like, I don't know, Dad, I don't like this, and then the fingers started to go up close to the ears. And then the eyes started covering. But then nothing happened. Like a character would be okay. And it's quite clever because the movie, we talked about how Shelley cries wolf in this movie. The movie kind of cries wolf a couple of times as well. So it lets you think you're going to get a scare. Then you don't get your scare. So when it finally does happen, you kind of think, well, I've done this before two times, three times. It's not going to happen. And then, boom. Boom. You get a scare. And this movie actually did get you with one scare, which surprised me. One skull. One skull is what you're going to give it, because it did get that proper one scare for you. Um, but there were some there's some interesting characters put into this one here. There is an old man that was asleep on the road. Ah, uh, the crazy Ralph Dupe. Yes, he was a duplicate of Crazy Ralph, which you said straight away, you were like, this guy's behaving a bit like Crazy Ralph, Dad. And I was like, remember, Crazy Ralph Ralph. died in the previous movie. Respect, Crazy Ralph. Uh, Crazy Ralph passed on, and you'd forgotten that. 
But he's even crazier than Crazy Ralph because what did he have in his pocket? He had an eyeball. <laughs> had an and then he said that that he had to give it to you so he could bless the people. Yeah. Um, <coughs> would you take an eyeball from a stranger on the road? Uh, no, because no. you would never talk to a stranger, would you, Winter? <laughs> we don't talk to strangers. Um, so yeah, there was there was that. The There's some strange characters in this as well. There's the biker gang. The what? Biker gang. Oh yeah, the biker gang. I don't think that was necessary. Well, so they're put in, I think the only reason they're in this movie is to all be killed off by Jason because there's not as many main characters in this movie as there were in the previous one and actually the one after is a lot more as well. When you think about it, there is two, four, six, eight in total. So there's the the couple that you asked if they were vaping. That's the bong vaping because someone is only nine. Um, what? So uh, bong vaping. Uh, uh, Dad, uh, let's not do that. Um, so there was those ones. There was Shelley and the girlfriend that they picked up, whose mum didn't want her to go to the cabin. Turns out the mum was right because she didn't live. Um, then there was the couple that were pregnant. And that's the one that went in the shower, died in the shower, and her boyfriend walked in his hands. Wait, she was did pregnant. the baby die? Yes. <laughs> it's Dead kind of, baby. It's, uh, Jason's not a nice guy. Well, Michael Myers is even nicer because he let the baby live. And uh, depends which movie you're watching. Um, and what? That's nothing. Uh, and then the other one was the main girl who had seen Jason two years before. Just walking about in the woods. Jason's just rolling. He's having fun. He's out there for a stroll. He comes across a girl. He just wants to ask her if she has the time. She freaks out, runs away. So he tries to grab her leg and tell her it's okay. And she thinks he's attacking him. At least that's how I think Jason thought the whole thing went. And the flashback, it looked traumatising. Um, the flashback looked like the girl was more scared. Than, I think that Jason was a little bit scared of yeah, his wall or screaming. Jason, Jason come round the corner from a tree. Out for a stroll. So I just thought, oh, you know, I'll just go out for a little stroll tonight. Oh, the air is so crisp and fresh. Ah, oh, yes. What's, what's this? Is, is that a leg hanging out a tree? Oh, no. And she's like, ah! And he's like, oh, no, no. I didn't mean it. She's like, ah! I don't, no, no, it's not like, ah! Like this. So it's literally what that happened. Um, so, yeah, and she survives at the end. But her boyfriend, his head gets squished and his eyeball pops out. So well, let's talk favourite kills, right? Let's talk favourite kills in the movie. Do you have a favourite kill? Yes. You do have a favourite kill. What was your favourite kill? Uh, my favourite kill would probably be the um the guy who had a motorcycle. Yes. You know that guy. And then he was just getting beat to death. He was, right. So for those that have seen the movie before, um, our final girl at the end is in the barn. It looks like Jason's going to kill her because Jason's been strung up and he manages to pull himself off and we're like, oh no, this is the end. And Jason's coming towards her and then the biker bursts at the door, comes running at Jason who chops his hand off and then flings him down and then stabs him to death. Judo Jason. Judo Jason strikes again. and then, But Jason's so distracted, he's so happy with stabbing this guy to death that he doesn't see... The um, the axe. He forgot about the girl. Dying. Forgot about the axe, so he took an axe to the head. I think uh, I think he's he was dead. just very, very like frustrated. He thought it was very frustrated. You know, I think he needs to do his skincare more often. I think he needs yeah. to get a mani. He needs to get a mani paddy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite kill is the man that walks on his hands, and uh, he walks around the corner and he looks up and Jason goes. I don't like that guy. I don't, oh, yeah. He's weird. Uh, to be honest, everyone is kind of... All the guys in this movie are kind of goofy. You know what I mean? They've yeah. all got... They're all... They can do, like, juggling or hand... Like, hand walking. Juggling and, isn't weird. But it's quirky. You know what I mean? It's kind of quite Like, I, I don't know if I've ever had a group of friends where about two or three of them can juggle. So, it's just strange. The other thing is, as well... Um, when we're talking about like deaths like they are pretty brutal in this movie so the guy that gets chopped in half the pregnant woman gets <coughs> stabbed through the chest while she's lying on the hammock 
Uh, the woman that screams that is utterly useless in this movie gets stabbed with a hot poker. Um, older guy gets his head crushed and the eyeball pops out. And then uh, he gets flung through a window. And then Julio Jason throws him through a window. Uh, the biker gets his hand chopped. Two people get stabbed with pitchforks. And then remember the... Uh... The girl who was swinging out of the barn, yeah, so she, she got... Yeah, she gets a pitchfork through the stomach that pins And up. then also the guy got the... Yeah, pitchfork. That's what it says. Stomach. Two pitchfork deaths in this movie. Um, pitchfork deaths. Deaths. Pitchfork deaths by Jason. Now, I've told you that um, because we won't be here when this episode drops, uh, we're going to watch part four in Japan. But I also told you that part four is set the day after part three so and most people think that part four is the best and you want to have the judge of that that's literally what you said when i'll I told be the you judge that. Of that. i'll be the judge of that dad so we will see if you will be the judge and we will see we'll see one how jason comes back i'm and gonna two, be brutal by the way also jason is supposed to be and i would probably agree with this the next jason is the angriest jason because he's been killed two days in a row this the fourth, third day the third day he's having None of it. We, we do need to do our ratings. Now, we've got something special for you to do your ratings in. So, do you want to don the mask? <laughs> right, you put the mask on and I will ask you the question. Now, Winter. Winter, Jason. Um, <laughs> I need to ask you. Um, <laughs> one is hated it. Two is didn't like it. Three is liked it. Four is really liked it. Five is loved it. What are you giving it? Friday 13th Part 3. I'm being brutal. You're being brutal? 2.5. A 2.5 out of 5 seems harsh. It does, it does. And it's the truth, though. Right, well, if that's how you feel, that's fine. I don't like this one much, but I would probably come in at a 3. Why? Oh, well, there's ones I dislike more than this. Is there actually? Yeah, yeah, we'll get to them. We will get to them in time. This one's near the bottom, though. There's too many dislikable mm. characters for me in this one. Um, and Obviously, Jason's what fine, the... but he's not great in this movie. The, the, like to me, yeah, this she's movie. A bit ugly. Yeah, but this movie is purely remembered not for all the stuff he does in the movie, but it's purely remembered because he gets a hockey mask. And then there's a little scar on top of that. Other side. Oh. Now listen, this one, however, even though with its two point five rating, got a one skull from you because it got you a scare when a body dropped. Um, yeah, I've, uh, out of all the scares, it scared me. Like, I literally was, like, dying inside, and on the outside, I was like, <laughs> but on the inside, I was like... Yeah, you, did, like, it got you pretty good, and I, I was surprised at that, because you're usually pretty good with those sorts of scares. Um, so I've got a one skull, you give it a 2.5, I'd give it a 3. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, uh, this episode will be dropping. We won't be here, but we will be monitoring comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, Winter is obviously making our debut, kind of, although we are going to do a Blair Witch one, which might also be out this month. I'm not entirely sure on release orders yet, so you may have already seen Winter. That's it. Yeah, you may You're have already seen it. You're spoiling it. Everyone will know what the episodes are. I post them well in advance. By um, the way, I'm just saying that, obviously I told you, but the Blair Witch one will be with my mum. Yes, that's Special right. We're going to drag your mum in as well. Who's we're going to drag that. her. We're going to grab her. We're going to drag her. We're going to put her on a chair. And make her watch it. Yes. And then make her talk about it. Yes. If she doesn't talk about it, she's getting banned. That's the plan. Right, Winter, do you want to say goodbye to the listeners, please? And wish them a happy Friday the 13th, the day in which this episode drops. Goodbye, everybody. Happy Friday the 13th. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. I'm closing out the show and I'm doing it right after this. And thanks very much for checking out this episode. Uh, huge thanks to my daughter, obviously. And um, yeah, while this episode is going live we will be watching part four she'll be watching that final chapter which we know as horror fans means that there's at least what another six seven after the final chapter because why would you have a final chapter be a final chapter we can use it as a pivot point to do all manner of weird fuckery so hopefully you enjoyed this episode if you're checking us out on youtube then please hit the subscribe button that way you get all the episodes pinging up in your feed 
as and when I drop them so you never miss anything we do. Please leave us a comment as well if you're checking us out on the Spotify's or the Anchors through video or podcast feeds there. Um, answer the question that we post on these episodes. It's a cool way to interact with us and make sure you subscribe to those feeds as well and lastly if you're checking us out on any of the podcatchers out there then also hit subscribe we have over 1260 episodes of this show in the archive now so plenty to go back and check out if you're a new listener but also plenty still to come up so all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for checking out this episode and wherever you are wherever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off <laughs>